Hi, I welcome you all for learning Python 3.x programming language with me. I'll be creating a series of videos in which I'll be teaching you the core functionality of Python. On this slide, I've embedded a official link of Python. We can explore more about the Python. It has a documentation features. You can learn more about Python from that documentation sections. You also have a download where you can go and download your latest version of Python. You can notice that under the download section, the current version that's available is Python 3.8.2. Now, apart from this, you can also look at the getting started features where if you are a beginner, then sure, I advise you to go through this beginner's guide so that you will get more insight about the Python programming language. You can also notice the jobs feature here. You can just go to the jobs.python.org and you also have a specific docs section, docs.python.org, where it gives you a complete tutorials and it also offers some guides in order to learn the Python programming language. What is Python programming language is all about? Now, Python programming language is a general purpose pro programming language. What do I mean by general purpose programming language? A programming language which is meant for developing a general purpose application. The general purpose term refers to a standalone application, could be a command user interface or a graphical user interface, or you can even develop a dynamic web applications like Facebook, Instagram, Google, and so on. You can also create a large enterprise applications. For instance, you can create a banking applications, a stock applications. These enterprise applications are pretty high-ended applications. So Python is not for kids alone. Okay. It's also for the professionals who wanted to develop enterprise graded applications as well. You can also leverage the Python's features into the fields like data science, machine learning, deep learning, neural networks, and so on. And also you can see the usage of Python programming language effectively in industrial Internet of Things and Internet of Things based applications. So it's a quite standardized programming language and it has a very well uh, established community in it who keeps contributing uh, to the Python's enhancements as well. Now, who developed Python? A person named Guido Van Rossum and his intention to keep the name Python is because he's a vivid follower of British comedy group called Monty Python. Now, to speak more technical about the Python, Python programming language is an interpreted programming language and it is highly interactive. So you will have an interactive console where you can quickly interact with the Python interpreter and instantly Python responds to your uh, commands. And it is also an object oriented programming language. You can cater all the object oriented features into your Python, like for example, creating a class, uh, grouping your functions inside a class and creating an object for the class, uh, whatnot. You can do anything that you want it in Python because Python is not just a scripting kind of a language, it is a well established general purpose programming language. That's great. So now going to the understanding of the properties of the Python, I would suggest you to understand the three major important properties of Python. Number one, Python is a strongly typed language. So right now I'm using an environment called Jupyter Notebook. We will explore about this Jupyter Notebook later in the session. But right now I'm just going to give you a small demonstration that this is an environment where we are going to run a Python code. So what we mean by strongly typed? If you look at this small demo, you can actually understand the term called strongly typed. Let's say I declare a variable called name and I'm trying to assign a value for this variable. So what is variable? What is assignment? Of value to a variable all these we will have more discussions on the upcoming se uh, series of videos now I'm trying to store my name let's say summary and uh, 
if I'm planning to print this value, so I just go and capture a function called print, which will help me to print the value of that variable. When we execute, you exactly get that value called summary. Great. Now the variable is coupled with the type called string. Okay. It's a string type. To be more specific, I can even use a function called type function, which is offered by Python built in function. And if we execute, you get to know that it belongs to the family called string. This name variable belongs to the family called string because we have stored a value of string type. But what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to do a concatenation. Concatenation is something where we try to concatenate two different uh, type of values together and bring up into a single type called string. So let's say I want to concatenate my name and as well as age. Age is of a number. So when I concatenate age, which is of type number with a string, your Python will end up with an error. Why Python is ending up with an error? Because Python is a strongly typed language. They don't allow a concatenation operations on top of different variety of data types. So in order to concatenate this, you have to bring down this particular type of integer to a type of string. So we use a function called str representing a string. It's an inbuilt function in Python. And if we execute this, now you are able to see that there is no error response from the Python interpreter. To see this value, let me print the name directly so that you get to know that the name and the age got concatenated and we are printing it. But ideally to say, whenever you go for a string concatenation in other languages, like for example, Java, you have a freedom to concatenate a string and a, a integer or a string with a, 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 a Boolean type or a string with a floating type. There are a variety of types we have and any type of combinations can be concatenated with a single entry of a string and the outcome will be solely of a string. You need not do any type conversions over there. But Python is very much clear about the type that you are using for a specific operations. So you can't casually go and do a concatenation with different types of operations. And that's the reason I say that it is strongly typed language. Next, dynamically typed. Dynamically typed is another major features of Python. So dynamically typed meaning is you need not define the variables data type anywhere in your code. For, let's take another entry of variable called age. So when I say age, I'm assigning a value directly. Nowhere I'm pointing that this variable is of type integer. You need not because dynamically when I'm going to run this, the interpreter is going to convert it to the type of integer and going to represent, represent them as an integer at runtime. And that's why it is called as a dynamically typed language. So if I print this age, it's printing the age called 10. And to be more precise, let's go ahead and get to know the type of this variable. By that means you'll get to know what type it is. Indeed, it is an integer as you notice. So the conclusion is it is dynamically typed language. But in other languages, we need to specify the type. It is a type like int. Int represents an integer family and age is of type int and then we assign a value called 10. This is the structured declaration of a variable with the data type and assigning a value to it. If I print, again, you will get the same output. So with or without the definition of this data type, your Python still accepts the value to get initialized because the Python focuses on dynamically typed language. Uh, in case of changing the value to this variable later point of time, you can still go ahead and change the value to this variable to another type as well, because dynamically the same variable will be considered as that particular data type at that moment of execution. What I mean by that initially it is declared as integer later, the same variable, I'm going to use it and reassign to another value called 10, but this time it's going to be of type string. So dynamically, the same variable is now denoted to a data type called string. That's what we pointed as a dynamically typed. Python is highly case sensitive, like 
other languages. For example, uh, you take Java, Java is uh, highly case sensitive. So if I get to the case sensitive demonstrations, you can notice that if I'm using a variable named, uh, let's say salary, and I'm assigning a value for it of type float. Now, when I print the salary variable, you get the exact output. But when I'm trying to print this yes with a capital letter, okay, and if I'm trying to execute this, then you get an error because the Python interpreter will not treat this name as exactly as this name called salary. Even though their pronunciation might be the same, but their cases are different. There, the variable is declared completely with a lowercase. And you are trying to access a variable with an uppercase uh, s, then obviously the interpreter can't uh, understand the presence of that variable. So if I'm declaring another variable called salary, and I'm defining a value like 2000, and if I'm trying to execute this code, you will get the value 2000 instead of 34.56. Why the reason is because I'm accessing the cased type of variable where s is in uppercase. So it refers to this particular variable rather than a lowercase variable. So not only for variable declarations, it is considered for your class naming definitions, your function naming definitions. So everywhere the Python plays with case sensitiveness based property, meaning is you can't treat a variable with lowercase and you can't treat the same variable with uppercase as a similar uh, as for a similar usage you can't treat it in that order so let's summarize python is strongly typed language you got an idea that when you try to concatenate two different types obviously you end up with an error unless if it's been converted to the right type of a string you can also say python is dynamically typed language and uh, python is enforcing the rule called case sensitiveness Moving on to understand what's special in Python then. Okay, so these are some of the technicalities that we are talking about. But what makes Python so special today in the market? Because people have started to talk about Python more rigorously. The reason is people are very much interested to get into the field like data science and they wanted to excel well in uh, machine learning uh, uh, situations. Or they wanted to train up themselves on uh, creating an IoT based applications. So in that case, they need to dwell with this base programming language called Python and people are started to focusing more on learning this language. Now, what makes Python special is Python is free, completely free. So what I mean by free is it is freely accessible even for the commercial purpose. Even for a commercial purpose, Python is absolutely free because it has been categorized as an open source uh, language by OSI approved uh, standard. The next speciality of Python is Python is portable, highly portable, meaning is uh, it's more of an interpreted environment. What is interpreter in Python? We have a special edition of video for that where you will have more uh, uh, animated understanding of how this interpreter works in Python that we will see it at the later point of the uh, video series. But right now, if you look at the portability, you can create a Python code in Windows operating system and the same code can be carried into your Linux operating system or it can be carried into your Mac operating system and still it works fine. Because the Python codes are highly portable, unless all those three operating system of environments are installed with the interpreter in it. Okay, so interpreter is all about making your code more portable. Next, Python is simple. That's why people used to say Python is for kids. Kids first programming language is, should be Python. Then there are uh, markets definition like that, where kids can learn a programming language starting from Python. Because it's that simple, it's more English kind of a programming language. What I mean by more of an English kind of programming language, it's more of similar to an English phrase so anyone can understand the code. You need not be a, a special uh, programmer uh, geek to understand the Python. Even a normal uh, kid can understand the code. 
That's how the Python is made to be. So it is highly simple. So it's uncluttered. It's, it has some fashion of uh, uh, indentations to be maintained and it is more, uh, uh, more prettier to look at the code. Okay. So as we go along with the video sessions, you will come across with a lot of uh, codes examples and there you will uh, get impressed about the way how we code the program uh, using Python. But at the same time, it's not that simple. Okay. So means Python is for kids. Then what about the professionals? No, it's, it doesn't mean that the Python is simple means it's, it's very simple. No, it's not very simple. It's, it's not that simple. Why I say it's not that simple is because it has all the complex features that need to be integrated in one programming language. So let's say, for example, a high level language implementation is already there in the Python, a, a complex data type is there in Python, your data structures are there, your functional programmings are there, your object oriented programming is there. Okay. So these might be a different technical terms that I'm using. Few people might not understand at this point of time, but still what I try to conclude here is Python has all its advanced features to get integrated as in a programming language. So in the next video, I'm going to discuss about exclusively on Python interpreter.